In physics and mathematics, a pseudovector is a quantity that transforms like a vector under a proper rotation, but in three dimensions gains an additional sign flip under an improper rotation such as a reflection. Geometrically it is the opposite of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction of its mirror image. This is as opposed to a true or polar vector, which on reflection matches its mirror image. In three dimensions the pseudovector P is associated with the cross product of two polar vectors R and B. The vector P calculated this way is a pseudovector. One example is the normal to an oriented plane. An oriented plane can be defined by two non-parallel vectors, R and B, which can be said to span the plane. The vector A times B is a normal to the plane, and is a pseudovector. This has consequences in computer graphics where it has to be considered when transforming surface normals. A number of quantities in physics behave as pseudovectors rather than polar vectors, including magnetic field and angular velocity. In mathematics pseudovectors are equivalent to three-dimensional bivectors, from which the transformation rules of pseudovectors can be derived. More generally in n-dimensional geometric algebra are pseudovectors are the elements of the algebra with dimension n-1, written lambda n-1 rn. The label, pseudo, can be further generalized to pseudoscalars and pseudotenses, both of which gain an extra sign flip under improper rotations compared to a true scalar or tensor. Physical examples Physical examples of pseudovectors include magnetic field, torque, vorticity, and the angular momentum. Consider the pseudovector angular momentum L equals R times P. Driving in a car, and looking forward, each of the wheels has an angular momentum vector pointing to the left. If the world is reflected in a mirror which switches the left and right side of the car, the reflection of this angular momentum vector points to the right. But the actual angular momentum vector of the wheel still points to the left, corresponding to the extra minus sign in the reflection of a pseudovector. The distinction between vectors and pseudovectors becomes important in understanding the effect of symmetry on the solution to physical systems. Consider an electric current loop in the Z equals zero plane that inside the loop generates a magnetic field or oriented in the Z direction. This system is symmetric under mirror reflections through this plane, with the magnetic field unchanged by the reflection, but reflecting the magnetic field as a vector through that plane would be expected to reverse it. This expectation is corrected by realizing that the magnetic field is a pseudovector, with the extra sign flip leaving it unchanged. Details the definition of a vector in physics is more specific than the mathematical definition of vector. Under the physics definition, a vector is required to have components that transform in a certain way under a proper rotation. In particular, if everything in the universe were rotated, the vector would rotate in exactly the same way. Mathematically, if everything in the universe undergoes a rotation described by a rotation matrix R, so that a displacement vector x is transformed to x equals Rx, then any vector v must be similarly transformed to v equals Rv. This important requirement is what distinguishes a vector from any other triplet of physical quantities the discussion so far only relates to proper rotations, i.e., rotations about an axis. However, one can also consider improper rotations, i.e., a mirror reflection possibly followed by a proper rotation. Suppose everything in the universe undergoes an improper rotation described by the rotation matrix R, so that a position vector x is transformed to x equals Rx. If the vector V is a polar vector, it will be transformed to V equals Rv. If it is a pseudovector, it will be transformed to V equals minus Rv. The transformation rules for polar vectors and pseudovectors can be compactly stated as where the symbols are as described above, and the rotation matrix R can be either proper or improper. The symbol det denotes determinant. This formula works because the determinant of proper and improper rotation matrices are plus 1 and minus 1, respectively.
Behavior under addition, subtraction, scale and multiplication Suppose V1 and V2 are known pseudovectors, and V3 is defined to be their sum. V3 equals V1 plus V2. If the universe is transformed by a rotation matrix R, then V3 is transformed to so V3 is also a pseudovector. Similarly one can show that the difference between two pseudovectors is a pseudovector, that the sum or difference of two polar vectors is a polar vector, that multiplying a polar vector by any real number yields another polar vector, and that multiplying a pseudovector by any real number yields another pseudovector. On the other hand, suppose V1 is known to be a polar vector, V2 is known to be a pseudovector, and V3 is defined to be their sum. Um, V3 equals V1 plus V2. If the universe is transformed by a rotation matrix R, then V3 is transformed to therefore, V3 is neither a polar vector nor a pseudovector. For an improper rotation, V3 does not in general even keep the same magnitude, but... If the magnitude of E3 were to describe a measurable physical quantity, that would mean that the laws of physics would not appear the same if the universe was viewed in a mirror. In fact, this is exactly what happens in the weak interaction. Certain radioactive decays treat left and right differently, a phenomenon which can be traced to the summation of a polar vector with a pseudovector in the underlying theory. Behavior under cross products for a rotation matrix are either proper or improper. The following mathematical equation is always true, where V1 and V2 are any three-dimensional vectors. Suppose V1 and V2 are known polar vectors, and V3 is defined to be their cross product, V3 equals V1 times V2. If the universe is transformed by a rotation matrix R, then V3 is transformed to so V3 is a pseudovector. Similarly, one can show polar vector times polar vector equals pseudovector, pseudovector times pseudovector equals pseudovector, polar vector times pseudovector equals polar vector. Pseudovector times polar vector equals polar vector. Examples from the definition. It is clear that a displacement vector is a polar vector. The velocity vector is a displacement vector divided by time, so is also a polar vector. Likewise, the momentum vector is the velocity vector times mass, so is a polar vector. Angular momentum is the cross product of a displacement and momentum, and is therefore a pseudovector. Continuing this way, it is straightforward to classify any vector as either a pseudovector or polar vector. The right-hand rule, above, pseudovectors have been discussed using active transformations. An alternate approach, more along the lines of passive transformations, is to keep the universe fixed, but switch right-hand rule with left-hand rule everywhere in math and physics, including in the definition of the cross product. Any polar vector would be unchanged, but pseudovectors would switch signs. Nevertheless, there would be no physical consequences, apart from in the parity violating phenomena such as certain radioactive decays. Formalization One way to formalize pseudovectors is as follows. If V is an n-dimensional vector space, then a pseudovector of V is an element of the Saint exterior power of V, lambda n minus 1. The pseudovectors of E form a vector space with the same dimension as V. This definition is not equivalent to that requiring a sign flip under improper rotations, but it is general to all vector spaces. In particular, when n is even, such a pseudovector does not experience a sign flip, and when the characteristic of the underlying field of E is 2, a sign flip has no effect. Otherwise, the definitions coincide, though it should be borne in mind that without additional structure, there is no natural identification of lambda n minus 1 with v. Geometric algebra. In geometric algebra the basic elements are vectors, and these are used to build a hierarchy of elements using the definitions of products in this algebra. In particular, the algebra builds pseudovectors from vectors.
The basic multiplication in the geometric algebra is the geometric product, denoted by simply juxtaposing two vectors as in AB. This product is expressed as where the leading term is the customary vector dot product and the second term is called the wedge product. Using the postulates of the algebra, all combinations of dot and wedge products can be evaluated. A terminology to describe the various combinations is provided. For example, a multivector is a summation of k fold wedge products of various k values. A k fold wedge product also is referred to as a k blade. In the present context, the pseudo vector is one of these combinations. This term is attached to a different multivector depending upon the dimensions of the space. In three dimensions, the most general two-blade or bivector can be expressed as the wedge product of two vectors and is a pseudovector. In four dimensions, however, the pseudovectors are trivectors. In general, it is a blade, where n is the dimension of the space and algebra. An n-dimensional space has n basis vectors and also n basis pseudovectors. Each basis pseudovector is formed from the outer product of all but one of the n basis vectors. For instance, in four dimensions where the basis vectors are taken to be e1, e2, e3, e4, the pseudovectors can be written as e234, e134, e124, e123. Transformations in three dimensions The transformation properties of the pseudovector in three dimensions has been compared to that of the vector cross product by Bayless. He says, the terms axial vector and pseudovector are often treated as synonymous, but it is quite useful to be able to distinguish a bivector from its dual, to paraphrase Bayless. Given a set of right-handed orthonormal basis vectors, e, the cross product is expressed in terms of its components is, where superscripts label vector components. On the other hand, the plane of the two vectors is represented by the exterior product or wedge product, denoted by a b. In this context of geometric algebra, this bivector is called a pseudovector, and is the dual of the cross product. The dual of E1 is introduced as E23, E2, E3 equals E2, E3, and so forth. That is, the dual of E1 is the subspace perpendicular to E1, namely the subspace spanned by E2 and E3. With this understanding, for details see Hodge dual. Comparison shows that the cross product and wedge product are related by, where I equals E1 E2 E3 is called the unit pseudoscalar. It has the property, using the above relations. It is seen that if the vectors R and B are inverted by changing the signs of their components while leaving the basis vectors fixed, both the pseudovector and the cross product are invariant. On the other hand, if the components are fixed and the basis vectors E are inverted, then the pseudovector is invariant, but the cross product changes sign. This behavior of cross products is consistent with their definition as vector-like elements that change sign under transformation from a right-handed to a left-handed coordinate system. Unlike polar vectors, note on usage as an aside, it may be noted that not all authors in the field of geometric algebra use the term pseudovector, and some authors follow the terminology that does not distinguish between the pseudovector and the cross product. However, because the cross product does not generalize beyond three dimensions, the notion of pseudovector based upon the cross product also cannot be extended to higher dimensions. The pseudovector as the blade of an n-dimensional space is not so restricted. Another important note is that pseudovectors, despite the name of R, vectors, in the common mathematical sense, i.e., elements of a vector space, the idea that a pseudovector is different from a vector is only true with a different and more specific definition of the term vector as discussed above.